Twitter. Okay, and then uh, apa tu uh, kita jumpa lagi pada pelajar yang sem lepas bersama dengan saya. Okay, so before we start our session today, so I would like to remind everybody uh, to mark your attendance through Putra Blast and I already uploaded uh, the course outline as well as the lecture note for our first week. Uh, but just to let everybody know that I'm not going to proceed until the end of uh, our uh, third hour. Okay, I'm not going to proceed three hours today because I'm going to meet the dean, the dean today at four. But we will go briefly lah, eh, because yeah. it's really yeah. by the repetition or just to refresh uh, some statistical knowledge that you already learned during your statistics class. Uh, kita nak refresh balik je sikit. Okay. But if you have any question during my presentation, just let me know lah. Okay. Uh, kita buat informal sikit hari ni. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is the course outline. Okay. Analysis. Make sure you are in the right class. Okay. Analysis and interpretation of data ERS 1951. Huh? Last time saya ambil kelas etik. And those who have nothing to ask me, so please mute yourself, okay? And those who are lying. Okay, mute yourself. Okay, unless you have any question. Okay, so these are the, uh, the learning outcome for this course, the synopsis, and then these are the course content. So I'm not going through the whole thing lah, eh? So tunjuk. This is, uh, these are the recommended uh, book, textbook. Uh, but actually it's already been updated then I will uh, I will share accordingly according to my uh, uh, lesson lah eh. I will share but sebenarnya saya dah tak pakai dah ni pun sikit je pakai. For example, field, hair, then most, uh, most uh, uh, Julie Palin yes. Tapi dia ada updated version. Later on I will share insyaAllah the latest version. Yang uh, lagi satu yang saya akan pakai adalah uh, preacher and his, the mediation. Uh, itu salah satu lagi. Tapi saya akan share juga nanti. Okay. Uh, so this week. Hold on. Okay, so this is we are going, today we are going to cover this one. Okay, introduction to quantitative data analysis. Okay, so this is the LO. Okay, at the end of the session, students are expected to uh, to be able to define what is statistics. So what is statistics? After completed. And score A for your statistics class. So what is statistics? <laughs> what is statistics? Huh. Anybody? I do. Okay. We leave the puzzle. Okay. Describe the type 1 and type 2 errors. Okay. Type 1 and two, type 2 errors. Some also use the type three. Uh, the other type three, pula. But that one we do not, we did, uh, we do not use in statistic, lah. Okay, the statistic only we use up to two errors. Okay, and then last one, identify types of statistical analysis available. But this one, to, uh, kalau kita sempat, okay, if possible, I will try to introduce a few. But during our whole session, uh, we will get to know. Uh, the type of statistics accordingly, okay, accordingly, so one by one. So what is statistic? Ah, what is statistic? Based on this figure, what is statistics? Ah, okay, uh, when we mention about the data analysis, again, it is closely related to the quantitative research. When we say quantitative research, it is related to numbers. Okay, so we are not talking about qualitative or data in words. Okay, so here in this class, we are not talking about the data in words. Okay, data in words give no meaning in this class. Okay. So then, when we conduct a quantitative research, the main concern is with numbers. Numbers. We concern about numbers. Okay, 
So when we want to, uh, when we, again, when we want to conduct a quantitative research, we need to know who are our population. Okay, and then if possible, we want to get to know how much are members in our population. So any values that derive from the population, the name is parameter. Okay, any values that derive from the population, the name we call it as parameter. For example, mu. Last time we you learned about mean, mean, mu. Okay, itu contoh, example. Okay, and then from the population, for certain studies, it is impossible for us to include every member within the population because our population is very large. Okay, for example, we want to cover every mem uh, every teachers, every, every secondary school teachers in Peninsula Malaysia within one year of your study period. So it is impossible. Okay, so therefore we apply the sampling technique. Okay, or we use sample. Sample means that a group that we select from our population. So the value that derived from the sample, the name is Statistics. Statistics represent the value that been derived from the sample. Itu maksud statistik. Okay? Um, eh? Apa kalau kita orang tanya kenapa apa statistik? Statistik are the values that derived from the sample that been selected from the whole population. Okay? Okay, eh? Um, eh? Okay. Next one. Anak-anak, anak -anak, ibu nak belajar dulu. Anak-anak ada tepi dulu, ya? Okay, so now, okay, when we conduct our quantitative research, okay, so now I'm going to touch a little bit on your proposal lah. Okay, because I expect, uh, if let's say you are in your third semester onwards, so, so you already have the idea what other research proposals are. Okay, what are the content that should be included in your proposal? Okay, so when you arrange your, when you develop your objective, because most of the time the quantitative ob uh, quantitative study is more uh, is more interested with objective rather than research questions. Okay, there are question, research question in quantitative, but we regularly use it. Okay, in quantitative, we are more concerned or interested with research objective. So when we develop a research objective in quantitative research, we need to make sure that every words that we choose in our research objective are in quantitative form, are in quantifiable form dalam bentuk yang boleh di quantify. Okay, itu tips yang pertama. The second tips is we arrange our research objective according to the level of statistical analysis that we are going to use. Okay, dia kita susun objektif kita bergantung kepada tahap analisis yang kita nak gunakan. As you, what you learn during your statistics class, the lowest level of statistics is Apa dia? Saya dah masuk gear dua dah. <laughs> Alah, kena cari je ni. Descriptive. Descriptive. Okay, yes, very good. So the lowest level in in analysis, in uh, statistical analysis, the lowest level of analysis is descriptive analysis. Example of descriptive analysis? Contoh? Mean. Mean. Mode. Mode. Median, yes, frequency. Uh, that one is the example of descriptive statistics. Okay, next one. Okay, next one. If in terms of grouping, first we have descriptive. Second one, we have the inferential. Okay, inferential statistics. So in inferential, we have a few types. The first one, we have comparison. Okay, so then if you have anything that you want to compare in your object, uh, in your study, then perhaps you may locate it as your second objective to compare between what and what. For example, to compare between male and female in uh, performance in DCE, uh, in ERS 5951, for example, you want to compare between male and female students. Okay, next one, we have the 
to determine uh, we have the statistical name correlation okay when we mention correlation the in, we are interested in two things first in terms of the magnitude of the right, uh, relationship the second one in terms of the direction of the relationship okay next one influence uh, influence me uh, there are some debate some said that if you use influence or uh, if you use the regression, multiple or simple linear regression in SPSS, you cannot determine the impact. Adalah, dia punya debate. But at your level, it is still acceptable lah. Sukut nanti. But as we know that the knowledge each uh, is evolving, later on, uh, for those who attended your PhD in the future, uh, dia akan ada debate lagi related to regression. Yeah? But, but for the time being, it is still acceptable if you use the regression need to represent influence. Influence need means that the flow of relationship move from A to B. Okay, we can see the flow of relationship because in association, we cannot determine the flow of relationship. Okay, we know the direction, but it, is, it does not uh, indicate the flow. A influence B. We cannot conclude that, okay? So these are among the analysis that we will use in our les uh, lesson lah in ERS 5951 ni, okay? Later on, uh, kita juga akan guna, I will, I will just briefly introduce you with mediation and moderation analysis. Okay, mediation and moderation analysis ni for at master level, it is an optional. Okay, but for PhD, nowadays it's become compulsory. So, kalau for PhD candidate, you are advised to attend uh, apa tu, the seminar lah, eh, the related seminar. For example, by Prof. Bahaman. Okay? Yang ni kelana saya bagi basic je. Oh, letih. <laughs> doktor, doktor nak tanya? <laughs> ya, yeah, letih saya. Yes. Okay, kenapa uh, type of analysis tu, doktor susun regression dulu, kemudian descriptive comparison, ada maksud apa-apa ke? <laughs> No, it's actually uh, a game. Tapi game tu tak menjadi hari ni. <laughs> okay, it is actually a game. Uh, saja uh, first first week kan uh, nak main-main uh, saja. Okay, tapi game tu tak menjadi hari ni. Saya lupa nak setting sebab hari ni baru buka lecture, lecture note. Okay. <laughs> tapi as long as you already, you you can recognize then it should be fine lah. At least kita recall je balik eh. Recall balik. Refresh and recall. Okay. Next one, okay. So then, next one is the types of variable. So this one I thought you already learned during your research method class as well. Okay, so we have single variable. The name single variable name means that we are only interested to study one single variable in our uh, in our research. It is possible, eh? For example, you just want to know, uh, apa tu, uh, the uh, the opinions, uh, apa tu, respondent opinion regarding who's going to be the next uh, the next prime minister uh, contoh okay and then we have independent dependent rival mediator and moderator okay in terms of model okay how to illustrate this the role of this variable into uh, uh, apa tu into an illustration so we can see from the right side okay uh, in the normal model eh, so we have uh, independent and variable uh, sorry independent and dependent rival Okay, so for example, the association or the relationship between compensation and organizational performance. Other name for this model, we call it as direct model. Okay, direct model. Okay, or simple model. Cukup lah tu. Okay, next one, we have a mediator. Kalau for example, you have a mediator in your model, then the name is mediation model. Okay, next one, if you have a moderator, Okay, then the name is moderation model. But at your level, so probably most of you will consider the direct model. Okay, direct model. No matter how many IVs that you have, as long as it is directed towards uh, one single DV, then it is a direct model. Okay, direct model. So far, any question? Then, okay, next one. scale of measurement okay so again in quantitative uh, so it is 
closely our uh, apa tu we need to know the attributes of our variable before we can start analyzing it okay so there are four categories of scale of measurement in quanti uh, in quantitative data analysis so the first one nominal okay so nominal i'm sure that everybody already know lah okay the, that nominal ni means that the number we use is only to represent the group for example one male two female it does not give any meaning if we change one to male two to female tak ada maksud apa-apa okay numbers just to represent the group because later on this number ni it will represent the code the code ni we will use when we enter our data in spss in our data analysis tool okay because in spss it cannot capture the qualitative data so that's why we need to transform everything into numbers okay dia hanya boleh capture numbers okay next one ordinal so ordinal ni numbers start to give meaning okay but we do not uh, specifically know the interval okay so for example we use ah uh, apa dia contoh first runner uh, first first place first runner up second runner up and so on numbers start to give meaning okay the, the, the upper the highest the rank the better the uh, the performance for example okay next one interval so interval ni it has it contain the attributes of nominal ordinal and interval the uh, apa tu uh, the new uh, attributes of interval is equal interval other than the number we use to represent the group the number also represent the ranking or the order and then the number also can represent equal interval equal interval for example ruler okay ruler the easiest is ruler okay example of intervals a variable under the interval scale of measurement is iq test result okay iq test result Okay, and anything that related to test, it is under interval. Okay, so next one we have ratio. So ratio contains all the attributes of interval, ordinal and nominal. Okay, it, uh, it can differentiate between uh, the two different group. Okay, it has the attributes of order or ranking. It has equal interval. And then the other attributes is the true zero. True zero means that zero means nothing. Zero means zero. For example, money. If I ask Mahfuz, Mahfuz, can I borrow 50 ringgit from you? Then nothing in uh, Mahfuz, uh, apa tu? Tak ada apa-apa dalam wallet Mahfuz. <laughs> uh, for example, Mahfuz banyak duit. Okay. So then, not zero. Another example is speed. Okay. If you move your car at zero speed per hour, means that the car is not moving at all. So zero means zero. Okay, so hopefully you can successfully differentiate between this four scale of measurement. So if let's say I ask you, Tanya eh, um, Likert light scale, what's, what is the scale of measurement of Likert light scale? Uh, what is the scale of measurement of Likert light scale? Nak pakai ni, this what this other the, the future researcher within the organisation ni? Ordinal. Ordinal. Yes. So below body scoring. Yes, ordinal. Okay, it is under ordinal scale of measurement. After you get the uh, mean, only then it is under interval. Okay, the original of like like scale is ordinal. Bagus balkis. Okay, ni tak apa, boleh laju ni. Okay, ni, ha, ni sama dengan uh, lecture note Prof. Bahaman eh. So, saya just refresh balik. Fabric colour. So, what is the scale of measurement for fabric colour? Fabric colour. Cuba tiru. Nominal eh. Nominal. Nominal. Yes, nominal. Betul. Okay. What is the uh, what uh, what is the scale of measurement for speed? Kita dah sebut ratio. 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 Intelligent. Alamak, alah, bocor dah. 
Hmm, intelligence score is uh, interval income. Income, income. Ratio. 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 Income categories. Ordinal. Ordinal. Yes. Marital status. Nominal. Nominal. Okay, tak ada eh. Yang, yang married better than single tak ada eh. <laughs> okay, attitude. Attitude. Interval. Interval. Very good. Socioeconomic status. Ordinal. Ordinal. Okay, perception scores. Interval. Interval, very good. Distance. Ratio. Ratio, very good. Ha. So, okay lah tu. Semua okay. Pass. Okay. Tak gerak pula. Okay. So, next one. Types of statistics. Masuk sikit-sikit eh. So, types of statistics ni we can differentiate according to a few criteria. The first one, if let's say we are interested in terms of the number of arrival in our study. So, if let's say we divide the type of statistics according to the number of arrival. So, there are three types of uh, statistics. We have univariate, meaning that the analysis ni only involve one variable. Okay, we, we focus on the single variable. Bivariate, uh, apa tu? Uh, for example, the analysis that include more than one variable. For example, to determine the association between IV and DB. Okay, bivariate. One IV and one DB. So, bivariate. And then, multivariate is the analysis that involve more than two variables. Okay, you have, for example, you have three IVs and one DB. Okay. So next one, if we divide our anal our statistic according to the requirement for normality, so then we have two types of analysis, which is parametric and non-parametric. Non so parametric ni analysis that requires your data to be normal. For example, Pearson product moment correlation. Okay. And then non-parametric means that the analysis used does not require any data to be normal. Does not require the normality of your data. For example, ah, hmm. huh? apa dia maksud? Spearman, Spearman rule. Spearman rule or Spearman rank order correlation. Ah, huh, simple je. Okay, next one. If we divide our uh, statistic according to purpose, either our purpose is to describe the variable. If the purpose is the main intention of the uh, apa tu, the study is to describe the variable, then the name of analysis will be descriptive. Okay, descriptive. Sama lah level tu, mean, mode, median and so on. And the next one, if the interest is to make inference. Okay, make inference ni uh, similar to make conclusion from your sample to the population. Okay, so the name is inferential statistic. So inferential uh, statistic ni may include comparison, okay, correlation, regression, and so on. Okay, itu inferential. Pusing-pusing bendanya hampir sama. Okay. Okay, next one. Okay, univariate statistics. So, kita pergi detail lah. Eh? So, univariate statistics, the main focus is to, uh, is to analyze one single variable only. Okay, so the advantage, we describe unit of analysis. We describe inferences. And then the types of analysis in terms of distribution. For example, we have frequency distribution. We have measure of central tendency. For example, mean, mean mode and median. And then we have measure of dispersion, MD, which is include range, standard deviation and variance. Okay, and then it also includes subgroup comparison for one variable. Okay, next one, bivariate statistic. It focus on two variables simultaneously. Advantage, we focus on the variable and then it include empirical relationship. Type of analysis, it can include subgroup comparison of two variables or, and sorry, and, and the relationship between IV and DB. Okay. Bivariate descriptive, ha, banyak pula. Bivariate descriptive ni, the purpose is to establish similarities or differences between variables of study, which is to describe pattern or connection or strength of relationship between 
variables of study. So for example, eh, when we uh, run the analysis of bivariate analysis, then we have the R value. R value. From the R value, we can be, we can determine how much is the strength and then what is the direction of the relationship. So the name of R ni bi is bivariate descriptive. We describe the nature of the relationship between the two variables. Okay, and then the statistical procedure commonly used, chi-square. Chi-square ni other than we can make the comparison, it also can uh, it also be can be used for to determine relationship. Boleh juga, chi-square ni. Chi-square ni one of the three key analysis. Okay, and then measure of association, for example, Pearson for that moment correlation, and then comparing mean between groups. Uh, ni pun boleh. Okay. Next one, multivariate statistic, in which we focus on the analysis of more than two variables simultaneously, which is the it is an extension of bivariate analysis. What would I say? Okay, advantage of the multivariate analysis in which we can run the analysis at one go. Okay, at one shot. So more to kita boleh run simultaneously lah. Okay, and then the types of analysis, for example, we have the multi, uh, multiple linear regression. If we run the, uh, apa tu, if we run, if we run in IPM SPSS, or if let's say we run the, the analysis in uh, MOS, so it's also possible for us to run it simultaneously, then we can compare directly the, uh, the, uh, apa tu, the strength of association between different IVs with the DV. Okay, itu dia punya advantage and type of analysis okay and then next one parametric statistic again this analysis this type of analysis it depends on the normality of data okay it consists of parameters and require assumptions about the population parameters first there are certain assumption of normality okay and then second one assumption of equal variance if in your study you are interested to compare Okay, if, if uh, you have any objective related to comparison, then you need to also fulfill the second requirement. Okay, assumption of equality of variance. Okay, or homogeneity of variance. Okay, the requirement to use the parametric statistic, you need to make sure that uh, the scale of measurement for both IVs and DV are uh, interval or ratio scale of measurement. It cannot be ordinal or nominal. Okay, at least interval. Okay, next one. Non-parametric statistic in which we make no assumption or no requirement for the data to be normal to run the to run this type of statistic. Okay, so uh, it is distribution free test. Okay, means that there is no nothing required, no requirement on the normality. Okay, so ni saya skip lah eh. Laju lah sikit ni. Sini, okay. Laju, ni dah. Okay, ni penting kot. Okay, this one is actually the process of making inferences because as what I said earlier, in most quantitative study, it is impossible for us to collect the data from the larger large population. So that's why we need to have sample. So kalau orang tanya kenapa kita perlu sample because it is impossible. Okay, kalau possible, if, if your study only in, include one single organization, then you can tel, uh, conduct your study by in, uh, apa tu? by involving the whole element within your organization. But if let's say it is too large, okay, giving the, uh, the time limitation for your study, then you need to consider the sample sampling, sample size. Okay, and then the process of making, uh, uh, apa tu, uh, make the conclusion from your sample to the population, the, the name is process of inferencing, process of making inference. Okay. Maksudnya, kita infer the finding that we got from our sample to the population. Okay. Okay, and then... Okay, so these are a few type of statistical software available. But, the, uh, but in UPM, most of the time we, we use IBM SPSS. Again, eh, the name is the name already changed to IBM SPSS. We no longer use SPSS uh, to represent statistical package for social science. Kita dah tak pakai dah, dah bersama dah. 
Okay, please. IBM SPSS. Okay, then we also use SAS, Stata, Minitab or M+. Okay, dia ada juga a few uh, free software available online yang quite compatible with IBM SPSS. Dia ada. Tapi saya lupa dah nama dia. Okay, dia ada. Kalau let's say you all uh, tak dapat uh, uh, apa tu uh, the pirate version for example, uh, you all pun boleh download that uh, that software. Saya lupa apa nama dia. Tapi if anybody need that software, please PM me eh. Okay, so then uh, when we run when we conduct quantitative research, we are also interested in early assumption. So hypothesis ni is an early assumption that we develop. Okay, even though in quantitative research we not yet uh, know about the find our finding of the study, but the finding of our study ni somehow is predetermined. Predetermining means that when referring to the literature and theory, we can predict what will happen. Okay. Uh, to our finding. Kita dah boleh predict dah the nature, dia punya nature. Okay. So then, we will propose two types of hypothesis. The first one is null hypothesis. The second one is alternative or research hypothesis. Okay. Alternative or research hypothesis ni dua benda yang sama. Okay. So null hypothesis is a hypothesis that the researcher tries to disprove, reject or nullify. Okay. So in research, the hypothesis that we test is the null hypothesis. But the research, sorry, but the hypothesis that we as a researcher want is the alternative hypothesis. Okay, again, hypothesis yang kita akan test adalah Null hypothesis, the, the hypothesis that we are interested as a researcher is the alternative or research hypothesis. Okay, when develop your uh, your uh, alternative hypothesis, there are two options. Either you develop it as uh, a no direction hypothesis or two tail or directional hypothesis which is one tail. Either you, you want to choose two tail or one tail, it depends on your Ha? Aku saya dah betulkan tu Literature Literature review ah, eh, Bukan objektif Mahfuz It depends on our literature review Means that it depends on past studies As well as depends on our theories What is the direction of the relationship If let's say during your literature review You, you found a compatible uh, number of studies Indicated positive or negative relationship so now you have to decide which one you want to propose, positive or negative. Okay, but if let's say majority propose positive, then proceed with positive. If majority propose negative, then go with negative. Okay, itu dia punya cara. So kita tak boleh suka-suka tentukan one tail or two tail. Okay, it depends on our literature review. Okay, yang ni tak apalah. Okay, these are the types of error, sama macam kelas perubahan. Okay, when we want, when we test, uh, sorry, when we conduct our study, and then when we want to make the decision, there are two types of errors that we we may we may face. Okay, so if let's say the proposed hypothesis is false, and then therefore we reject the null hypothesis, so we make a correct decision. Okay, next one. If our uh, null hypothesis is true, then we fail to reject null hypothesis. Therefore, our decision is correct. Okay, next one. If our null hypothesis is true, but we reject null hypothesis. So, our decision that we made is incorrect, uh, incorrect which is type 1 error. The next one. Our null hypothesis is false, but we fail to reject null hypothesis. So this one we involve in type two error. Okay. Okay. So ini dia punya nilai. Eh? Okay. So how we can reduce the type one error? Okay. So type one error ni it can it is not possible to completely uh, be eliminated. Tak boleh sebenarnya sebab dia akan ada error sama macam sabut. Okay, dia akan ada je 99.99%. It will be never 100% sure that our research are perfect. Our research is perfect. Tak ada. Okay, but we can 
try to uh, reduce okay by minimizing the significant level we reduce the significant level for example from 0 0.05 we use 0 0.01 okay because the significant level ni can be choose by uh, by the researcher so to minimize the type 1 error ni we reduce the significant level okay okay how to reduce type 2 error so type 2 error ni we can reduce in three ways first one by uh, true, sorry, true effect size in which we will learn this accordingly later. Next one, by reducing the significant level, okay, in, in which if let's say we reduce the significant level, it will increase the power. What is power in statistic? I'm sure Prof. Bahaman already asked this question. What is power in statistic? Huh. Berapa horsepower? What is power in statistic? Ha. Kekuatan untuk menolak uh, hipotesis eh? Menolak hipotesis. Menolak hipotesis ya. Okay, the tendency to reject the null hypothesis. Semakin tinggi the tendency, semakin tinggi power. The higher the tendency to reject the null hypothesis, the higher the power in statistics. Ha, eh? ha, dia tak kira 4, 5 horsepower. Okay, next one is by increasing the sample size. Uh, by increasing the sample size, we can reduce the tendency of type 2 error. So, ini cara, tiga cara that we can use or apply to reduce the type 2 error. Okay, so this is the example of type 1 versus type 2 errors. For example, you decide to get tested for COVID-19 by using the RTK, RTK uh, based on mild symptom. There are two errors that could potentially occur. First, uh, type 1 error, the test result says you have coronavirus but you actually don't. Hmm, maksudnya, the, the tools tu ada type 1 error. Kita tak ada tapi dia kata positif. Uh, RTK ni ada type 1 error ni. Sekarang ni. Okay, type 2 error which is false negative. The, the test result says you don't have COVID-19 but you actually do. Hmm. But sekarang ni saya rasa dua-dua ada. Type 1 and type 2 error ni. Yang RTK sekarang. Okay, clear eh? Beza dia? Okay, the statistical test ni, okay, it is most of the time referring to alpha value lah eh? Or the p value, alpha value, p value. Okay, and then it is confusing statistical significant and practical significant. Hmm, ni tak apa. Ni saya skip lah dulu. Tak apa. Okay, so which statistical test to be used depends on your objective of the study. Depends. As what I said earlier, when you develop your uh, objective, you, you should be able to already determine what type of statistical analysis suitable for your objective. Dah tahu dah. Okay, that's why you are recommended to attend the statistic class from the very beginning. Daripada awal lagi, so masuk kelas statistik dulu. And then it depends on the scale of measurement of, the, of your variable. Okay, and then whether you are studying the whole population or sample, and then type of sampling technique used, probability or non-probability sampling. These are the four determinants that will determine what type of statistical analysis suitable for your study. Okay, and then in terms of the purpose of this course, actually, okay, this course actually, eh, um, I will try to help you from preparing your instrument. But I do hope that you already have the prepared instrument. Hmm. Because you, you will have the better understanding if you are already at this stage. Okay, prepare research instrument, identify the population, sample selection, data collection, or uh, you already done your pilot test, uh, apa tu, you already have your pilot test data, and then we will run the reliability analysis letter, and then actual data collection, data analysis, data interpretation, and report writing. Because the purpose of this class actually will help you in this section. Data analysis, data interpretation and report writing. Report writing ni sikit lah eh. Dua ni je. Data analysis and data interpretation. Tapi saya akan sentuh sikit yang uh, apa tu earlier section ni. InsyaAllah. Okay. So first step in data analysis. So information collected that we have is called the raw data. 
Okay, the, the, the information that we collected from our uh, from our participant then we, uh, we convert it into, uh, we enter it into SPSS, the name is raw data. We not yet process our data. Okay, and then first step, we need to ensure data are clean, free from inconsistencies and incompleteness. Ensure responses are complete. But before we do anything from our data, ni, we need to make sure that our data are clean. Cleaning means that we have a complete response for each, uh, uh, for each question. Okay. What, what happen if, for example, you have uh, eight items under variable A, but out of eight, there is one or two respondent that only answered five out of eight. Now what about? You have eight items for variable A, okay? But out of eight, there are one or two respondents that only answered five out of eight. What should you do? Remove, kan? You should remove, right? Remove. The first option, remove. This one is the most extreme action. Remove ni extreme sangat. Okay, if you have uh, uh, apa tu, uh, additional responses, meaning that it exceed your sample, then you may consider to remove. But what happen if let's say the number of respondent that you have betul-betul kena dengan sample that you need? Hmm. What happen? Mungkin ada yang dah tahu. Kita kita refresh dan sama-sama ingatkan je. First, that we can do is try to get the mean. Mean. Uh, okay, get the mean for all the eight items and then locate the mean into the empty responses. Uh, the blank responses. Masukkan mean. So we didn't change anything. Second thing is you contact again your respondent to answer. But we do not know because in quantitative, the responses are anonymous. Tak tahu kan? Tak boleh. Okay, next one, you just enter zero. Okay, so for mean kan, uh, for mean if you suggest that we use mean but for lower sample punya, no, this is uh, reliability that means after that because kalau high, high for my understanding uh, if high sample is okay to use mean tapi kalau low bukan nanti dia punya uh, data tu akan lari je. Apa, reliability ni later on based on uh, based on the individual tu, it is not based on mean, ha, tak apa. Okay? Hmm. Then, Okay, itu, itu tips lah eh. Next one, prepare for data entry. Okay, when you want to prepare the data entry ni, the more, the first step is coding. Code. Prepare a code book. Code book ni you can prepare either by formally or you, you as a researcher can remember any code that you use. Yang penting, the most important is you as a researcher, you know the code, what does the code means. Itu je penting. Okay, for example, one... Yes, yes, Mahfuz. Sorry, sorry. For the data ni perlu masuk in our research uh, proposal ataupun research paper ke? No. no ni. Uh, it is the technical step only. Uh, technical step. Maksudnya kita tahu what, the, what does the code mean. Uh, for example, you want to use philanthropic behavior, then I use PB. Later on, perhaps when you present your data, then your finding we indicate PB. But then you still need to prepare the legend. What does it mean by PB in your diagram, in your uh, table? Nah, kat bawah tu kena letak note. PB equals to philanthropic behavior. Okay, so that your audience know what does it mean. Okay, and then create the SPSS file by enter coding in SPSS file. Okay, and then perform data entry. Okay, after you perform the data entry, then you need to clean the data. Clean the data ni mean at this stage it is referring to EDA, Exploratory Data Analysis. Later on, we will learn about EDA. And then we need to perform data transformation to run further analysis. For example, to entertain the objective related to comparison or uh, objective related to association. Okay, and then we perform data computation. Okay, if necessary. Okay, this is the example of sample of code book. Uh, code book. Ni contoh lah eh, code book. Data compulsory. 
Sebab kalau ada ni maksudnya kerja kita ni lebih structured lah. Structured. Kalau tak ada tak apa. Okay so I thought that's all for today. Sikit je ni. Refresh sahaja. Okay so any question? Tak apalah eh. Kita panaskan je sikit hari ni eh. Okay tak ada soalan kan? Yeah, okay, so if there is no more questions, so I thought we stop here today because at four I need to meet the dean. Kalau tak saya sambung lagi. Okay, so we dismiss here today and then see you insyaAllah next week. Okay, so take care guys. Be, uh, but for those who are under my supervision, if you want to stay, then you may stay because I have a discussion. <laughs> okay, so thank you guys. Thank you, Dr. Nur. Terima kasih, Dr. Nurmi. Thank you. Dr. Nurmi, Assalamualaikum.